spaghetti yo we snap our fingers hello you ready snowball are you ready friends well you know what we're gonna do now we're gonna put on our imagination hat are you a construction worker today snowball are you an astronaut today <gasps> what are you today a doctor a nurse are you a chef <gasps> an artist an author hmm I would love for you to email me and tell me while you're home today and we're using our imagination who are you I'm feeling like I want to have a glorious day so today I'll be Queen Maxie and I'm going to read to you for story time my first book, The Wild Buck. So every Sunday we'll update a chapter. There's four chapters and we'll be doing four recipes. The main characters are Molly and Fern. Oh, hi Fern. I see you up there in the tree. And hi Molly. Don't be scared of climbing trees. Go out, take chances, have fun and explore. In this book, we'll be exploring the Pacific coast of California. And in each chapter, I want you to note the characters, the setting, and I want you to also think about your favorite recipes. We'll be making delicious homemade hot chocolate, mmm, breakfast sweet rolls, Strawberry lemon lemonade. And our finale is going to be a huckleberry pie. So thank you for joining me at Huckleberry Hill. And let's get to story time. The Wild Buck, written by Maxine Carlson and illustrated by Drew McSherry, a Moonbeam Children's Golden Book Award winner. Chapter One, Good Morning. Molly and Fern live in a sprawling house atop Huckleberry Hill. It's nestled in the Del Monte Forest along the majestic Pacific Ocean. The richly fascinating environment in which they live holds boundless opportunities for exploration. On this particular summer morning, a coastal mist hovered against the hillside. Billowing wisps of white fluff embraced the towering pine trees sheltering Huckleberry Hill. While sitting on cushy high back chairs at the kitchen table, older sister Molly and little sis Fern nibbled on Italian sweet rolls. Slowly awakening, Molly and Fern sipped hot chocolate. And over breakfast, Molly and Fern discussed a reoccurring dream. During last night's slumber, they were collecting golden seashells from the beach and spotted mermaids in the waves. How very special, Nana thought to herself as she listened to her granddaughters. I love it that my grandchildren often share the same nightly dream. Molly rested her head against her sister's shoulder and listened to the morning call of blue jays outside. Fern's eyes shifted to movement beyond the kitchen window. And Molly looked outside, too. They saw something. Something was moving in the grass on the high slope. <gasps> yes, there behind the huckleberry bushes. Each girl was certain they could see it out the window. A fantastic sight. Through the mist, in the distance, rose an enormous set of three tipped antlers. <gasps> 
before their eyes. It stood. It was a marvelous, full-grown buck. Sis, isn't that buck magnificent? exclaimed Fern. I wish I had my shoes on. I'd run outside and get a closer look. Ha, 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 Fern, you're crazy, Molly reasoned. Not it'd be so mad if we went outside barefoot. Let's just stay right here and look at that buck through the window. To prove her point, Molly took a big bite of her sweet bun and extended a warm smile. Just that moment, Mom and Dad walked into the cozy kitchen. How are my two darlings this morning? Mom asked as she swept into the door. Fern had one eye on her mother, but she kept another eye on the buck. Mom was dressed in her workday clothes. Her hair was styled and her face was on. And you know what Mom did? While the girls were distracted looking out the window from the buck outside, well, the parents bent down and Mom placed her face between her two daughters and she gave loud, loving kisses to both girls practically at the same time. And Molly and Fern could feel the love. Dad whistled, zippity doo da zippity day And then he smelled a glorious scent from the oven. <gasps> Nana had made Italian sweet buns. <sighs> Nana, Mom said, what a beautiful surprise. You know how I love your pastry. Delicious, perfecto, a real treat on this cold, damp summer morning. I wish we could sit and enjoy these, but we're running late. We've got to get to the office. No problem, Nana said. I'll pack these to go. Well, Mom walked out the front hallway and she looked at the girls. She told them, no shenanigans today. But Fern, her bright eyes and mischievous smile, well, they couldn't help but reflect her love of adventure. She thought to herself, we found a new friend today. He's right outside. Today's the day to the search. They would search for the wild buck. Fern leaned in towards her sister. She whispered to Molly in a quiet voice. Hey, sis, why don't you follow me? I think this is the day that we are going to have some fun in the forest. Join us for the next reading of Chapter 2 next Sunday. And until then, stay tuned because we're going to be doing some cooking. Our recipe is homemade hot chocolate. You're going to love it. So join me, Molly and Fern, in our Huckleberry Hill kitchen as we do a wild buck recipe, cooking hot chocolate. After all, isn't cooking fun and full of love and full of entertainment and we can do this together at home. Stay tuned for our recipe. To the Huckleberry Hill Adventure Kitchen. Today, I'm gonna to be making hot chocolate. So first, you're gonna need milk or almond milk. You're gonna need about two cups of that and warm it up in the microwave. Or you can do it on a stove. Make sure to have your parents help you. Then you're gonna get sugar, cocoa powder, and cinnamon or nutmeg. Okay, so first you're gonna put your sugar in. Then you're gonna mix that up with the whisk or fork. Then you're gonna put your cocoa powder. And keep whisking it. You 
and mix it up really good. Then you're going to put your cinnamon or nutmeg in. And you really got to whisk it so everything's all mixed together. Really hot. 